the most important thing in our life is to remember and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Almighty says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ We do not create jinn or human beings except that they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the purpose of our life. We have been created to glorify and praise Him. And many a times when we talk and deliver speeches, many a time we do not hear the praise and of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We hear His hamd, yet we don't recognize Him. We hear His name, yet we don't understand Him. We hear His names and attributes, yet we understand very little about Him. We know that we must obey Him, yet we continue to disobey Him. Who is Allah? Why should we glorify Him? Why should we believe in Him? You know, every single ni'mah and blessing that you have is given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Almighty says in the Quran, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُخْسُوهَا If you were to try to count the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will not be able to count them. You will not be able to. Allah Almighty has given you ears. Imagine living a life without ears. Imagine living a life without this blessing. He's given you eyes. You can see with those eyes. Ask the one who is blind. How is it to live without eyes? Yet he's given you that ni'mah. Allah Almighty has given you an intellect. The thing that differentiates between you and an animal is the intellect that you have. But do we use that intellect for his sake? Look at what Allah Almighty says in the Quran. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Huwallavi Jaala Lakumusama Wal Abasara Wal Afida. He has made for your benefit, he has given to you for your benefit the ability to listen. Wal Absara, the ability to see. Wal Afida, the ability to think. But look at what he says. ma tashkurun. How very little it is that you are un, that you are thankful. It's very little. Very few servants of Allah do his shukr. Do you know hamd? Hamd is to praise with the tongue. That's easy. Shukr is when your actions praise Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That's what shukr is. That's the difference between hamd and between shukr. And Allah Almighty says, Qalila ma tashkurun. You do shukr despite my blessings that I have given you, your shukr is very little. Qalila ma tashkurun. Despite my blessings. And do you know the more you read the Quran, everyone reads the Quran. It's a tragedy that we do not read the meaning. Very sometimes in many circles, very little emphasis is given on the Holy Quran. But many people still read the Quran. They don't understand the meaning. But those who read, how many a times do you see the verse, lakum, 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 you know? Lakum, when you read, it comes so much. How many times do we do khatam? When you read the Quran, you'll see lakum. Do you know what this lakum means? It comes in so many verses in the Quran. I'll give you some examples of what Allah Almighty is saying. Wa min ayatihi, and from his signs, an khalaka lakum. Min anfusikum azwaja. It's for you, for your benefit, that He's created spouses for you. For your benefit. Lakum. Allah Almighty says in Surah Al Baqarah, Alladhi ja'ala lakum al arda firasha. Allah Almighty has created for your benefit, insan, al arda firasha. Al arda firasha. He's created the earth as a bed. Was sama'a bina'a. And the sky as a canopy. And he sends down water from the sky. And it's because of that water that fruits are produced in the ground. 
for you, for your benefit, in son. For you. These are the ni'mas of Allah, but who are they for? For you. But do you show that shukr to Allah? Do you know that He is? All of this is for you. Allah Almighty says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَاكُمْ فِيهَا وَجَعَلْنَا لَكُمْ فِيهَا مَعَايِشْ وَجَعَلْنَا لَكُمْ فِيهَا مَعَايِشْ He has created livelihood. You know all of these animals that we eat, all of this drink that we drink, this earth that we take benefit from, this is called ma'ayish, livelihood. It's called ma'ayish, livelihood. And who is this livelihood for? It's for you. Allah Almighty says, we have created everything for you. Again in this verse, قَلِيلًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ How very little it is that you do shukr, that you are ungrateful. All of these verses in the Quran, what do they show? Allah Almighty has created the earth, the sky, spouses, created fruit, all of this for your benefit. And what does He want in return? That you remember Him, that you glorify Him, that you praise Him, that you remember Him. He's your creator, your sustainer. Every breath that you take is because of the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If He wants, He can stop you from breathing. If He wants, He can take away these blessings in an instant. Look at the earthquake in Turkey. Did they know seconds before that there would be an earthquake? Seconds before. And all it took, it was just a few seconds. And the, their whole world turned upside down. And there was one person, he made a video. He said, for 15 years, I was just, just living for money. I forgot about my creator. And this earthquake reminded me my awqat, who I am, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when nothing. If he wants in an instant, he can take away these blessings from you. What does he want for you? In return, that you glorify, thank and praise him. Allah Almighty says in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, We will test our servants with khawf, with fear. This is one of the tests of Allah. And you know the opposite of fear is to be safe. Do you know safety and security? It's a ni'mah from Allah. It's a blessing from Allah. Allah Almighty has tested the people in Palestine. There is no khawf, there is, there is no safety there. Allah Almighty has tested the people, the Muslims, in different regions. Yet all of you, He's given you safety. Imagine there was an act of terrorism and our safety became compromised. Do you know that feeling inside? Do you know how it is to, to live when you don't know whether your mother will be alive, your father will be alive, you go home, your children may be dead? Watch the videos in Syria. They're killing, they're shooting the people and kicking them down a pit. This is what it is to live like in terror. Yet we live in aman, which is a ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Almighty says, well, we will test you with hunger. Do you know to have food is a ni'mah of Allah. We're living in testing times. People complain. We want a bigger wage. We need a bigger salary. We need bigger houses. We need bigger cars. Yet we always forget that there's a large number of human beings who don't even have a morsel to eat. They don't even have water to drink. Many of us, we haven't lived a day in our life in that state. Not even one day. Every day we have food. Every day we have water. We haven't been given that test of hunger. This food that we have, again, is a ni'mah of Allah. Allah Almighty said, we will test people with a lack of wealth, a shortage of wealth. Yet do we have that test? We have so much money. We can buy food. We can buy cars. We can provide education for our children. We can provide gifts for our loved ones. We don't have that. Many of us do not have that difficulty. And these are all blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah Almighty, He tests people in the most difficult of ways. 
Yet if you think about the ni'mas and bounties of Allah, He has given us everything. He has given us all of these blessings, all of these bounties, only for us. And Allah Almighty, He says, what does He want in return? قُلْ أَطِيءُ اللَّهُ وَأَطِيءُ الرَّسُولُ Obey Allah and obey the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is what he's asking. And now I'd like to turn my attention to my younger crowd, those who are going to colleges and universities. And many people, they are under the assumption that, you know, religion, religion restricts you. But the West, it gives you a free life. And under this premise, they have fooled many people. Many people are now under the assumption that religion is backward. Why? Because it limits your freedom. We want complete freedom. Don't they say, YOLO, you only live once. Take this opportunity once. Enjoy yourself. Why are you sitting around in a masjid for? Why are you remembering this Lord anymore? Go and enjoy yourself. That's what... You know, the premise is, and especially many people who go to universities, many people who are in their late 20s, early 30s, are affected by this. They may not admit this. They will say, we follow Islam as well. But deep inside, they think, I like being free. I like enjoying myself, and it's true. Islam does limit your freedom. It is true. But it's for your own benefit. It's for your own benefit. And I'll explain this to you logically. We all have parents, and you know when you're young, don't they always say that don't go out in the night? You're 18 years old, you want to go. Clubbing, Broad Street, Birmingham, Sheffield, Leeds, Manchester. You want a night out. You want to mix that Red Bull with that vodka. You want that your parents telling you, Puttar, don't go outside. It's harmful for you. Don't they always say to you, Stay away from bad company. And they know who you're hanging around with. You think, why is my old man always nagging me for? My old man, when will he get off my back? I want to be free, I want to live. These are my young years. Don't, your parents always say to you, pray your salah. And you think, oh, come on. They say to you, get off your PlayStation, go and do something for the house. Many young people, they can't be bothered to do anything. All day, all night, watching Netflix. 12 hours, you know, addicted to this. And their parents are telling them, go outside, get a job. It's for your own benefit. Fast forward 10 years, 10, 15 years. These same people realize that their parents were telling the truth. Their parents wanted to limit their freedom only to benefit them. Only so that they understand the importance of life. How should I live? Do you know, in, think about many of you who are past 30, think about when you were 18 or 19. Think about the boys around you. The one you used to say, my boy, my G, family, we're family. Where are they now? If you used to mess around with them, go around with them, where are they? When you were 30, 35, you realized it was just a phase. My parents were telling me the truth. Even though they wanted to limit my freedom, they were telling me for my own benefit. It was for my own rectification. And it's the same. When Allah Almighty says, I've created everything from you. Some things are halal because they are beneficial for you. Some things are haram because they are harmful for you. It's only for your benefit. Allah Almighty says, stay away from having relations outside marriage. Why? It's to preserve your own nasab. Imagine, can you control whether you'll have a child or not? No. You have a child outside marriage, the nasab will be lost. To protect your nasab, Allah Almighty says, <coughs> stay away from homosexual relations. And it's a big topic now. And we're not scared from voicing the opinion of our religion. We respect all people. Yet we believe this is a command from Allah for our own benefit. Man stays with a woman. They have children together and they live together. In some countries, because of the decrease of marriage, the child rate is dropping enormously, largely. And in the future, they'll find it difficult. The Prophet ﷺ said, get married, have children. And this is a cure for you. This is something which will be beneficial for you. 
Allah Almighty says, stay away from intoxicants. Stay away from, from things which damage the aql, which damage the mind. Why? It's for your benefit. You're going to be thinking, I want those balloons. I want to get high. I want that weed. Big problem still in our community. Years have gone by. People have been warned. People are high. They're driving cars and they die. It's only for your benefit that do not take these things. They damage your intellect. How many times do we see man high, driving a car, you know, over 100 miles an hour, 120, 130. He thinks he's a bad man. Next minute, game over. He's dead. He died in that state. Died that kind of death. Allah Almighty, what is he saying? Stay away. Why? For your own benefit. It's for you. And I want especially my younger children to be listening to this. There's going to come a time where you will be tempted by these things. It will tempt you. So much peer pressure. They're going to say, what? You're a simp? You know? Hang around with us. You're not cool. You know, just take one drug. One drug. Keep it in 10, 15 seconds. The longer you take, the higher you'll get. And it's a difficult phase. Believe me. Living in this country is not easy. Living in the West, that pressure is not easy. Yet stay true to your religion. Stay true to Allah, the one who created you, the one who molded you, the one who gave you a form, the one who made you a good human being. Stay true to Him. When that pressure comes, believe me, my brother, it will be difficult. But why? Why is He telling you stay away? Only for your benefit. It's for your benefit. Why? But when somebody is in a state of intoxication, if somebody, he can do anything in that state. Anything. He doesn't know. People think that this, I will solve my problems. You know, many people who drink, what do they think? By drinking, this will solve my problem. I want to get away from the stresses of life for a while. That's not the solution. If you think that, you, the moment you, you're sober again, you're living your life as normal again. The problems are always there. Don't look for a temporary solution. Look for a permanent solution. And the permanent solution is in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what is the Western world and the attraction of the Western world? What does that tell you? Come, enjoy yourself. Have as many relations as you want. You know, take these drugs. Enhance yourself. It'll make you better. What does Islam say? Stay away for the protection of yourself. Protect yourself. Don't fall into this trap. Do you know every single ruling of the Sharia revolves around five things. And these things are called the Kulliyatul Khams. Deen, number one. Number two, Haya, nafs, life. Number three, Mal. Number four, Aqal. Number five, Nasab. All of the rulings of the Sharia are to protect these, to protect your life. Why is riba haram? To protect your mal, so that you have enough money. Why is alcohol haram? To protect your aql. Why is zina haram? To protect your nasab. This is the reason for these things. And in the ending, why are we doing this? For His obedience, for our Lord Allah. You know, we're very good at lip service, all of us, me included. When we say we'll do anything for our religion, we'll die for the sake of Islam, we'll live for our master Sayyiduna Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. Yet do our actions reflect our words? That's the question. Allah Almighty says in the Quran, Inna Lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We say this all the time. We have a janaza after the salah today. We all say when we hear Inna Lillahi. وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Indeed, we belong to Allah. Look at what we are saying. وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ And we're returning to Allah. We don't say ذَاهِبُونَ We're going to Allah. If you're returning somewhere, then that's your original destination. When you're on a holiday in Morocco and you're coming back to England, do you say, I'm going to England or I'm returning to England? I'm returning to England. I'm returning to my homeland. Why? Because that's my original destination. 
By the way, many people, they go Morocco, the older people should know, they're not going to visit shrines, they're going to chill. You know, many people say we're going Egypt, the parents get happy sometimes. They're not going, many of them, they're not going to Egypt to visit Mazarat, they're going to chill in Egypt. All of these lands which were meant for us to visit and remember the place of our ancestors, they're going to have a good time. <laughs> and then they say, we're coming back to England, but remember, Raji'oon. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. We're going back to Allah. What does that show? Our original home is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't belong here. That's why many people ask, how can I find happiness here? You were never meant to find happiness here. Permanent happiness can never be found. Permanent happiness is in the abode in Jannah, inshaAllah. And that's the place that we all want to go to. We all want to head to Jannatul Firdaus. Why? Because that's the place where we have permanent happiness. Khalidina fiha. You will be there forever and ever. There's not a time limit. Forever we will live there. And but then Allah Almighty says, just as we have created Jannah, we have also created Jannah. If you want Jannah, obey me. Obey the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. If you disobey me and my messenger, then there's a chance that your final abode will not be in Jannatul Firdaus. And this is a necessary reminder. And why is this? Because many people, they, our youngsters, they go to university and what do they learn here in mosque? They're only here maybe from 7 to 13. There's been maybe two or three failed generations in many masajid of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Up and down the country, there's not a shadow of a doubt that there's been maybe one or two failed generations. What education have they been given? They've, some people have attended mosque from 7 to 14. You ask them, what is your aqidah? They have the incorrect aqidah. You ask them, tell me the rulings of Islam. They don't even know about the five pillars. And sometimes we're sitting in front of those failed generations. Many people have told me and many other people that we've been to mosque five, six, seven years. We never learned any tajweed. We never learned any fiqh. We never learnt any aqeedah. These are the tools that are going to protect you. You know, these youngsters, when they have a good Islamic education from the age of 7 to 16, that is their source of protection when they go and study, when they go to university, because they know enough about their deen. We have people going and studying now, and it's difficult. They know nothing about the deen of Islam. How are they going to be protected against the challenges? When they're talking about biology and genetics, and evolution, and philosophy, and psychology. Do they know enough about the deen of Islam to protect themselves? They don't. That's why many people were in some places were two generations away from irtidad, from ridda, apostasy from the deen of Islam. Because they don't have the tools. But the masjid is supposed to be a place where between the ages of 7 to 16 and beyond, they were supposed to nurture themselves against the challenges. Yet what do we see? Many a time, many a people, they haven't equipped themselves with the necessary knowledge of the deen of Islam. And that's why when they go to these places, they struggle. No connection to their faith. And I'm sorry to say this, but it's the truth. In the masajid of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, we have not catered for them. We have not. In Birmingham and in London, many people have less left this aqidah. They've left this way. It's no joke. It's no secret. Many people in the elder generation know that my grandson, he doesn't want to do a khatam anymore. He doesn't want to celebrate Milad Sharif anymore. And you know the reason why. They've found a greater attraction in them. Why? What's the reason? It's because many of them have risen up to the challenges. They've, they've faced the challenges and they find answers there. When they don't find answers here, naturally they will go there automatically they will go there. And it's the truth and for many years we've shied away from the truth. It's time to accept the truth and this time it will not be that they turn towards other sects in Islam, they will leave the religion of Islam. It's serious, it's beginning now. People do not accept the narrative of Islam. Many of our younger generation, they are not accepting the norms of Islam. When you tell them certain things are forbidden and haram, they do not take it seriously anymore. Why? Because the religion has become a joke. And it's the truth 
and it's something that we seriously, seriously need to admit to ourselves and then face and rise up to these challenges. It's our duty as Muslims who believe in Allah, who believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and who believe in the final day that we take this responsibility seriously. If you do not take this responsibility seriously, Ma'azallah, the day may come where our own children say, we do not believe in La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May we never live to see that day. May all of us be enlightened with the nur of Iman. May our hearts always be attached to Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May our hearts always have the love of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa salam. Every vessel in our body, may it flow with the love of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa salam. Inshallah, our blood will flow with the love of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The answer is in him. Blessings are distributed by him. Remembrance of him is a means of salvation and security. And this is what our religion teaches us. This is our iman. This is our Islam. This is our everything. May Allah Almighty allow us to sustain our iman. May Allah Almighty keep the love of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam in our hearts. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.